Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV and Boat. So I'm back with part two of my Xantrix Freedom XC Pro 3000 converter review. In a previous video, I did the installation and a demo video for you. And I said I'd come back and do a kind of a deep dive into the, the settings and the features of this inverter charger. And in another video, I'll come back with my full review after using it for uh, our off-grid adventures this winter. So let's get into the, the features. Got the manual here and it's got the key features. So we got power for most appliances, um, continuous utility grade sine wave power derived from a battery bank. So it's designed to handle loads such as microwave ovens, TVs, Blu-ray players, and power tools. In addition, the Freedom X Pro's high surge capability lets you handle many hard to start loads, including full-size residential refrigerators. So we use a microwave and TVs and computers and it's handled that fine and also did a test with our uh, air conditioner unit and it was able to run that no problem. That's part of its kind of high surge capability. When you fire on an air conditioner, there's a compressor that needs to turn on and it, there's an instantaneous surge for that. Also has a built-in transfer switch to automatically transfer, transfer between inverter power and shore power. Backup capability, if incoming shore power is interrupted by external events like brownouts, the Freedom X C Pro automatically becomes an independent power source that supplies AC power to your loads. So if you're in a campground and, and the campground power goes out, it'll just switch right over to your, uh, your inverter to supply all your power. Over here, we've got built-in protection for your your batteries, uh, low battery voltage alarm and shutdown. So uh, if your batteries get too low, it'll automatically stop uh, stop, stop drawing power from them before they, they go too low. Um, it has a voltage shutdown delay timer. So a lot of times if you're if you're running a microwave or some something like that that's taking an instantaneous draw, sometimes the batteries will sag in voltage just temporarily. So you don't want the, the inverter to shut down right away under those conditions. So you can configure that from one to 300 seconds. Um, and also as a power save, um, can automatically turn out, off after one to 25 hours of continued operation of loads that are under 50 watts. Um, personally, mine, I, I leave that, that feature off because there's a lot of things we run in the RV overnight that, that I don't want the inverter to shut down. Um, configurable AC transfer speed. So when it switches uh, from grid to battery mode, um, its default setting is kind of an appliance uh, mode, which is fine for most things, but we run a lot of like desktop computers. I have my Starlink internet. So I set it to the higher transfer rate for that because I've got kind of sensitive digital equipment that needs to switch over in about 10 um, milliseconds. So it's nice that it has that versus other, other transfer switches that aren't fast enough to do that. And then you end up having to go and turn things on again. Overload alarm and shutdown. So during battery mode, it alerts you if the loads that are connected and drawing power from the unit are close to approaching the maximum operating limit. So there's a little bit of a beeping happens, and then it will shut down before it hurts itself. Over temperature alarm and shutdown, same thing. If it if it gets too hot, it will shut down. But it does have a, a alerts that before that happens, it kind of beeps and lets you know that. I haven't ran into either of those things yet. Uh, Built-in charge formulas. So it can, uh, you can set it up for different types of batteries, your standard flooded lead acid batteries, gel, AGM, or a custom mode, or what I use for lithium. I have lithium um, iron phosphate batteries. I actually have the Xantrex batteries that I'm testing with it. And uh, so I just have to go in there and set it for that, uh, that, that profile. Or if you need custom profiles, that, that can happen too. Uh, manual equalization. So this is for, for flooded type batteries that sometimes they need to go through an equalization mode to desulfate their plates. So it's a capable of doing that. A lot of 
chargers aren't capable of doing that. Um, so that's a nice feature. And then something that's really handy for lithium is dead battery charging. Sometimes lithium batteries can get to a point where they go into a, a safety shutdown mode or they go actually into a sleep mode or they arrive in a sleep mode and, and basically they'll have zero volts on the terminal and you need a, a, a specialized type of a charging unit to wake them up again. And this is, is, this is capable of doing that as well. Then there's ignition control. Um, I don't personally use that. I just leave it off. But if you were in, say, a motorhome or a van or something like that, and you wanted the inverter to turn on when you turned on the vehicle, you can set it to auto on um, when you flick your, your ignition switch on or off. Or you can have in what's called ignition lockout, where you can have that happen, but also have a, a manual switch to do that. And then they're they're saying it can work in in North American type 60 hertz frequencies or 50 hertz, which is used in other parts of the world. And you can set it through three different voltage settings. I have mine set to 120 volts. Load management. So this is handy. So you can set this uh, to to optimize it for running, say, a, a generator. I have a 2,000 watt generator, so that puts out about 14. 0.5 amps, so I can go in there and set my AC load lower so that um, I don't overpower that generator when it's in it when it's in it's uh, hooked on and, and running it. So when I say it's charging the batteries um, from the generator and I turn on a load, it'll automatically back off the charging so that I can utilize the generator to run the load and then like a microwave, for instance. And then once I turn that off, it'll go back to charging. Okay, so that's pretty well the, the core features there. Uh, next, I'm going to go and uh, we'll have a look in the owner's manual here at adjusting the, the features. Now, I'm not going to go through on the panel because it's kind of tedious, but um, I actually have the remote control panel that gives me the app, and I'll show you on the app. But if you didn't have the app, you'd have to do this through the panel. Um, and you go through there and you would press and hold the OK button for three seconds to enter configuration mode and change general settings. Press OK button to enter sub settings if applicable. Press the scroll button to scroll through the different settings. Press and hold for three seconds to scroll back one step. So you would go through the settings and then they have all the settings listed here and their corresponding setting number. So I say it kind of get a little bit of tedious if you have to do that, but you may only have to set it up one time and that's fine for you. You don't go in and change settings, but I use, uh, I use, I like to be able to change my charging um, settings and certain settings quite often. So that's why I invested in the remote panel so that I would get the Bluetooth capability. Um, so let's just go to my phone and I'll bring it up on screen and we'll show you all the different settings that this inverter has to offer through that. Okay, here we're booted up the app and you can see the, the main screen just gives you current information on what's going on. You can see right now the load is 130 watts and the battery is outputting 10 amps. Um, so we want to go to settings here. There's a gear icon in the bottom corner, and that opens this. So you got your inverter settings, charger settings, custom grid system, and device info. So this is just going to go through a lot of the settings I just told you about. We'll go to uh, inverter ignition control, and that's what it, I leave mine off, but you can have auto on or lockout. Then we've got low battery cutoff. And you can set different uh, voltage levels to whatever you prefer. I use lithium batteries, so I like to keep mine around 12.1 volts because if it gets down that far, it's actually getting pretty low. My battery system will be getting pretty low. So it will beep. Low battery warning is triggered at plus 0.5 volts. So at 12.6 volts, it's going to tell me, hey, your, your battery bank's starting to get low battery cutoff delay timer. 
and I just leave it at 300 seconds. The timer setting value can be adjusted between one second and up to 300. So if, if it is a low battery, it'll wait to that before it would before it would shut the inverter off. And then low battery recovery voltage. So if it's gone down to where it's shut off the inverter for any reason, it would wait until your battery voltage came back up before it would turn it back on. Uh, power save time, like I say, I don't use that because overnight, a lot of times we have very little power running on it, but I don't want it to turn off. Uh, one reason is uh, my wife uses an electric blanket at night and that electric blanket sometimes isn't drawing power, sometimes is, so I just don't want it to, to go off and leave her cold in the, the middle of the night. Uh, so I have power save mode you can disable or enable. Output frequency, 60 hertz. Output voltage, like I say, 120 volts. Uh, inverter output power limit. So it's a 3000 watt inverter, but for some reason you may not want to set it that high. And one reason is like some of the lithium ion batteries have a limited amount of output current that they can supply before they would go into a, a, a high discharge shutdown. Say for example, you only had um, one lithium battery and it only could put out 100 amps. Well, you wouldn't want, you, you could set your power limit down so that it would never overload that battery. I'm okay though, I got two big uh, lithium batteries and they can put out up to 300 amps. So I'm okay leaving mine at max, but that's a, a nice setting to have. One thing I like about this inverter, there's just so many way, custom settings you can, you can do with it. So it gives you a lot of options. Inverter output powered limit timer. So if it's gone higher than, than what you want the, the inverter power output to be, especially if it's paired with a lithium battery, you can set it to the number of seconds. Um, some lithium batteries, they will have a continuous power shutdown, but they also sometimes will allow you to go above their rated power for a certain amount of seconds like say five seconds, they might go double their normal discharge rating. So that's a good setting. You can you can match it to your batteries if you're using a lithium battery. Uh, transfer mode, so we've got UPS or appliance. So UPS is for if using it with sensitive equipment like computers and electronics. So I leave it on that. Inverter shutdown recovery. So if it does shut down because it got too hot or too much current or something like that, you can have it automatically try to restart. I think it's up to three times. And that would be good if you if you are away from your inverter a lot, say you had it on a boat or something, and you want it to, if it, something happens, you want it to try to restart. I leave my own manual restart because I'm always around this to restart it if need be. Okay, so that's all the inverter settings. Now we'll go to the charger settings. So it has an up to 150 amp charger, this model. Um, then it and gives you the battery type. And I have it on set for lithium, but like I said, there's flooded, gel, AGM, custom, and lithium. Default battery temperature. Uh, it doesn't really apply to lithium, but uh, you can, in lead acid, you can set it for different uh, defaults and then if it gets colder the the, the voltage will adjust um, and help better optimize your charging of your lead acid batteries. Yeah, there's a charger ignition control. I just have mine set to off. If it's on it operates in tandem with the vehicle's ignition circuit. Equalized charging for flooded battery. I don't have that because I have uh, lithium batteries but it's really nice that this charger is able to, to equalize for you and then charger current right now it's just set to 40 amps but like i say it can go up to 150 amps so i adjust that based on you know how much power i want to be drawing off my generator sometimes i'll lower it if i'm needing my generator but maybe I'm in a campground where you want to be kind of quiet. You don't want the generator running flat out. Like it, it, my generator could put 100 amps 
of charging into the batteries, but it would be fully turned on really loud. So say I want to kind of mellow it down. It's got a, a speed control on the generator, eco mode. So if I go lower amperage, the generator is actually a lot quieter. It might take longer to charge, but you wouldn't be annoying a neighbor that's not too far away. And down here we got custom. That's that uh, if you set custom custom uh, battery, you can set the absorption voltage and the float voltage. Here's grid um, yeah, under voltage setting and then the breaker rating is important if you're say like i'm running a generator and say i want the generator i don't want the charger to draw more than 14 amps so that i won't overload my generator so you can specifically match the input amperage to the, the generator that you have but it also on the grid it can go up to 50 amps this model We got audible alarm, enable or disable, reset to defaults. Um, and then we got the different firmware. There's a, gives you the numbers. And on the Xantrek site, you can download firmware onto a, like a USB key, plug into the USB slot on the, the inverter. So you can update your firmware or your the remote panel firmware, serial number, manufacturer date, and that's about it. That's all the settings in there. Well, there you go. It's a little more in-depth look at all the settings and features of this Santrex inverter charger. Um, like I say, if you missed this video, I'll link back to this blog post. Also on it, I have links back to the installation and review of their 2000 watt Freedom XC Pro, the marine version that I installed into our, our uh, CHP trawler boat last summer. I also have links here to the Xantrex website, my Xantrex video playlist. I'm also reviewing their uh, 240 amp hour lithium battery um, and link to more boondocking related videos. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments on the YouTube video and I'll try to answer them myself. If not, I'll get a hold of Xantrex and try to get an answer for you. Well, next time, Ray from Love RV and Boat. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers, guys.